right there. Do you guys see anything down there? Wow, look at this. This is absolute insanity. Good morning and welcome to another episode, guys. I am way out in the mountains in the remote wilderness right now at a beautiful, beautiful river that we're gonna fish together. I've got the fly pole right here. Let's go check it out. All I'm doing right now is scouting for some good fly fishing spots. Wow, that's just crazy. Way up there, there's a giant cascading waterfall coming all the way from the top of the mountain, just dropping again and again down the rocks. Unbelievable, let me show you guys camp. I came out here with the camper van actually yesterday and I'm gonna spend probably three or four days in the mountains. No real plan or schedule. I don't have to be home by any certain time. This is camp right here, welcome to camp. Oh, it's beautiful. There's the camper van right over there. It don't get a whole lot better than this. This is where I was having a little fire last night, just hanging out by the river. And camping in the van right there last night was so nice. Just listening to that river all night long. Just a beautiful day, man. What we're gonna do today is really just uh, fish this spot here. I have not fished on this trip yet, so we're gonna make the first few casts together. And then what we're gonna do is kind of work our way up the river and just find more and more spots that look fishy. We'll try fly fishing, we'll try the bullet lure. This river here does not allow us to use bait, uh, but we can use artificial lures with one hook on it. All right, here is the van. As you can see, I've already got everything ready to make a little cup of coffee in a second. A Little bit of a mess in here, but not worried about it. Sorry, sleeping bag's a mess and everything, but that's my bed back there. Got uh, full 12 volt power throughout the van. Still need to finish up little things here. Yes, uh, you guys do see there is a full size uh, kayak inside the van there. It slides underneath the bed from the back. Just charging a little bit of batteries and my satellite radio right there right now. Really the biggest modification that I've done with the van was back here. Now I put a nice solid shelf right there so I can have the kayak underneath, kind of some roadside emergency supplies in these uh, sections right there. We got our cooler packed with food. We can be out, I've got enough food and water to probably be out here in the mountains for at least five or six days right now. I could bring more. Let me show you what we got here. Probably not for today, well at least not for the river. I brought insects along. I've got a bunch of crickets and mealworms. Put some storage up on top that's been much, much needed just to make more space inside the van. So all I'm doing right now up on top of that, in that cargo carrier, I'm just transporting firewood in there. The only thing that I'll do is collect like a little bit of tinder. Uh, like over here, actually check this out. This stuff here, it's called lichen. What lichen is, is it's a symbiotic relationship between, I believe, algae and a fungus. And it grows up on these trees there in the branches. And when it breaks off and hits the ground, uh, these guys right here, if they're dry, make probably one of the best, if, if not like the best fire starter that we have in this area. It did actually rain here the last few days, so everything's pretty damp. Uh, so what I just did was I collected this lichen laying around. I'm just drying it out right now so that we've got a better fire starter for later. All right, but first things first, let's go ahead and just take a couple casts here. I just, let, let's do the first cast in this beautiful hole. No idea if we'll catch anything right here, but it looks just so beautiful. Uh, right here, if you guys are wondering what this is, it's actually a fly wallet. Check it out, so you can carry your favorite fishing flies uh, right there on your arm. This actually came from one of you guys. Brandon, thank you so much, man, for hooking me up with that. I think we're just gonna get started. We're gonna start fishing with this little leech pattern fly. All right. I'm thinking the trout, if they're hanging out here, they're not gonna be right in the thick of that current there, but I'm thinking they're gonna be kind of on that slow seam of water moving this way where it's not where it transfers from white to that nice dark green. Little roll cast. Come on, baby. Oh man, I feel like it's gotta be loaded with trout right there. It just looks so perfect. Right there, do you guys see anything down there? 
I think what we're gonna do is switch it up just a little bit. I'm gonna use a smaller presentation. We're going really, really small. That little guy there, it's called a zebra midge. We'll see what happens. Sometimes you just need a really small presentation. This little guy might sink faster too because here we probably have to get a little lower down to the bottom to get into the effective zone. It's pretty, pretty fast water and I think we need to get down to the trout. Ooh, thought we had a bite there. Thought I saw that line move a little, little quick. <laughs> Sorry guys, <laughs> I didn't want to ruin their day and kind of blow them off the rock. It's like a hurricane hit them, but they were fighting on that rock there. I don't know why. I'm having a hard time seeing if we're getting any bites. So we might have had some bites and I'm just missing them. So we're gonna throw a bobber on the fly rod. There we go. They're also called strike indicators, but really it's just a little mini bobber. All right, let's see if that makes a difference. <laughs> Whoa, just did the splits here. Oh, so much better. Here we go, I kind of want to fish down there a bit. Oh, 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 a trout just came up and hit the, a trout came up and hit the indicator. No way. Sorry, he was a little tiny guy like that. Man, the birds are just going wild over there. The water is so clear. I don't know if you guys can see any fish down there. You probably know more than me. How cool would that be to catch one right in front of you guys? Look at this little fly right there, what the hell? We're gonna try the bullet lure. What I did uh, is just, I pinched off uh, the barb and two of the hooks. So we're single point barbless now, which we have to be for this river. What we're gonna do is cast into that heavy current and then just do a very slow, slow retrieve. And that's kind of the zone that we're fishing back there. All right, right there, nice and slow, fishing deep. Oh, that's a fish. Oh, oh, we had one for a second. My drag, oh, my drag might have been really loose. We had one right down there. Oh, man. All right, come on, come on, come on. Let's repeat that. That's where they're hanging out. No! Ah, oh, man. No, we can't lose a bullet lure. Oh! Snapped off, dang. Don't know what that is. There might be a big log down there. Well, nothing so far, but that's all right. We're gonna make some coffee. So I found this coffee at the store yesterday. Uh, I felt like Upland, that, that fits with this trip here, so that's what we're making today. So while that water starts boiling, I just wanted to fly the drone real quick, just because it's so beautiful out right now. And I wanted to check out some of these big snow fields up there. There's some giant, it looks like avalanches that had come down this winter, which are giant like snow slides that come down from the mountains. If you guys don't know what that is, they can be quite deadly if you get caught in one.
this is just a quick little snack to get some energy because we're gonna move on now and fish some other spots. I'm just hungry, man. I need some energy to keep going here for today. Eggs and potatoes, you can't go wrong with that. That should keep us going for the rest of the day until we catch some fish that we can eat together. Mm. Man, so we have packed up here, still no fish. A couple bites, but they just stopped biting at this spot here, so it's okay. I've kind of hung out long enough here. Sun's, I mean, days fly so fast when you're out here, it's ridiculous. So let's go ahead and find another spot. I guess I should unlock. Let's see where else uh, nature takes us. I was gonna go to a lake further up the road, but there's the river again, but it's, uh, it's getting late, man, and we need to hike in. And so I'm kind of thinking we just keep fly fishing the river today and then maybe hit up that lake first thing in the morning. I think we found a new spot. Let's see if we can get down to the river from here. Wow. Whoa, crazy, look at that, the river. Just doing a total S-curve here. Wow, look at those rapids. Well, we ain't fishing any of that, that's way too crazy. Wow, look at this, this is absolute insanity. Look at those crazy rapids. <laughs> or you got to be really careful whenever you're by rapids like that. If you fall in, well, you don't want to fall in. Oh my goodness. Look at that pool. Oh, it's heaven. This is heaven right here. Oh my goodness. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can just sneak in there. There we go, a little further out there. Come on, baby. Let's get a little, just a little nibble here. I've pretty much fished bobbers, spinners, bottom fishing, and all sorts of stuff since I've been six years old. And fly fishing only for the last like couple years. So I am heavily catching up, but I'm determined to get better at it. And then it, one day it'll become kind of second nature. So we're just gonna try the bullet lure again here. This just looks like such a perfect spot. There's gotta be a fish in here. Oh. Oh. We for sure just got hit on the first cast, guys. For sure we just got a couple hits right there. It was not touching the bottom. It's probably a really good trout holding spot right there. Come on, right here, right here, right here. Take a nibble, take a nibble. Oh, I see him, I see him, he's, he's right there, he's right there. Oh, he, oh, he touched it right there. <laughs> oh my goodness. There was a little one that followed it to right there and he even bumped it, he bumped it real quick, but he's tiny. I'm gonna really just try and let this thing sink. Let's let out some line and really let the river take it. Hopefully not all the way though. I don't wanna lose this guy. There he is, that's a fish baby. Oh, we lost him, <laughs> we lost him, damn. Oh yeah, oh my goodness. Oh. Look at that, just so crazy beautiful. Maybe we'll just try jigging the lure. Oh, there we go, that's a fish. That's a fish. Oh my goodness. Oh. No, I didn't think this through. Oh. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, in the net, baby. In the net, we got one. 
Look at this little trout. Finally, we know what species this is. This is a uh, an Eastern brook trout. Look how beautiful that fish is. Oh my goodness. What's interesting about Eastern brook trout is first off, they're not native to this area and Fish and Wildlife actually encourages you to harvest them. There's no minimum size, no daily limit. They're invasive, they want them out. So we're gonna actually keep this guy, even though he's small, he'll just be a little appetizer. But what's interesting too, is that an Eastern brook trout is not actually a trout. They're related to a trout, but they're not like a brother, they're more like a cousin. They're in the char family. But despite this little guy being invasive to our area, we still wanna treat him with respect. So we're just gonna put him out of his misery right away. Plus, man, I'm a little hungry and I could use some fish tonight. Come here, buddy, come here, come here. It's almost over, almost over, almost over. There we go. We're just gonna follow up with another one. I make darn sure that they're actually done. Not just stunned, but that they are, they're, they're done. It's super cool to come out fishing and harvest, but we gotta be humane, so always think about that. Thank you, buddy. This time I've got the net up here. I don't know if that's gonna help me or hurt me. Maybe we can jig right below us, right there by that crazy current. Oh man, it's deep here. I'm just gonna open our bale and let him down. All right, there we go, we're at the bottom. Oh, oh, had a bite, had a bite. There we go. That's another one. <laughs> oh, 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 no! My net. Oh, and it's a, it's a little rainbow. Uh, oh, in the net he goes. Let's get the lure out. There we go. All right, we're gonna kind of keep this guy in the water. Oh my goodness, the colors on this little guy. Oh, he's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Remember, always wet your hand a little bit before handling a trout if you're gonna release him. You can see it's a wild, beautiful, wild little rainbow trout. Look at the markings on him. Look at the markings and the color. Guys, do you think? Oh, and he's gone. He's already off. <laughs> That's perfect. Clean release. He got away. Based on the colors on that guy there, do you think that those were obviously juvenile trout markings? You can tell by those vertical lines. But let me know in the comments what species you guys thought that was. I'm gonna guess rainbow, but he almost had a golden shimmer to him. Not like Palomino trout golden, but almost like a golden trout. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. That, I mean, that was a beautiful fish. And we wanna make sure that we handle those gently and just release them right back into the water. So let's see if we can get another one. Oh, oh, very next cast we had one. This is loaded with trout here. Oh no, it's a rainbow. <laughs> That's all right, we'll let him go. Come here, buddy. There we go. When you're fishing single point barbless, the hooks come out really, really easy. Yeah, look at that color. This one has exactly the same thing as that last one. You see that kind of that golden color back there, red? Oh, you know what this might be? It might be a red band rainbow. I'm not sure. I am not sure at all. You guys let me know. All right, buddy, we're gonna let him go. All right, he's out of here. You know what, let's try the fly pole again. I'm thinking we try the fly pole again. They're biting like crazy and I really wanna get one on the fly. I added a little piece of split shot and I raised the bobber quite a bit so that we're fishing deeper. I think that's been our problem is we can't get down to these fish. Oh my goodness. All right. All right, come on, baby. In the current it goes. We're just gonna let that fly drift out to about right. Ah, where do we wanna be? I think we keep catching our fish right about there. So let's hope that that fly can sink. Oh, there he is. There we go. Fish on, baby. On the fly. Oh, it's a giant mess. <laughs> there we go, he's a little guy. 
little guy. What do we got there? Oh, he's another little brook trot. Ah. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh, <laughs> he went flying. <laughs> oh, we got him on the zebra midge. Oh, he inhaled the, inhaled that zebra midge. Awesome. This little thing was so deep that uh, it was kind of a pain to get it out of there, actually. Ah, oh, man. Even though they're invasive, I was, uh, I shouldn't let them go, man. He's so small, though. He's so small. All right, sorry, buddy. It's just you're, you're the right fish, just living in the wrong area. Just cut him from right there, from the butthole, to about right there. And then we're just going to cut right behind the head. Like that. And then you can pull the whole head along with all the guts right out of there. We're just going to return all those nutrients right back to the river. That way all the crawdads and everything can eat it. Score the kidney real quick. Push that out with your finger. There we go. It's a clean trout. All right, hopefully we catch some bigger trout tomorrow, but uh, for right now, they're not trophies, but they'll be some great food for tonight. So we are in heavy bear and mountain lion country here. Now I'm not worried about wildlife at all, but I do always carry some form of protection with me. On this trip here, just because it's kind of like I was in the mountain man vibe, we went full mountain man. And we've got an old 1800s black powder 44 revolver with us. We're gonna use this to start a fire later. I've never tried this before, but this should be fun. So this gun here does not use modern bullets. Instead, it uses lead round balls that you can cast yourself. It uses black powder that we've got in here, and then little percussion caps that go onto the back of the cylinder to set everything off. And we're just gonna measure some black powder here. There we go. We're gonna drop that ball right on top of there. There we go. So let's just say you're trekking through the woods, out hiking, fishing, having fun, and all of a sudden you come around the corner, and whoa, there's a bear right there in front of you. Do remember that this really is their home. So the last thing that we wanna do is to have to shoot an animal. So the first thing you're gonna do is just stay super calm and just kind of assess the situation. And most of the time the bear will just walk away by itself. Now let's say the bear did not just run off the moment you saw him and instead it's kind of checking you out. What you're gonna to wanna to do then is make yourself really big and make some noises like, hey bear, get away. Go, 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 hey, 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 hey. And just slowly back up, don't run but slowly just get out of his way and make yourself large. Now, if all else failed and the bear's still coming after you after trying to scare him off, maybe you even had bear mace, but if that did not work either, then the last resort is this right here. Right there, first one got him. Now, we survived, but really that's a very tragic moment. So, the main thing I want to tell you guys is just avoid the situation altogether. Just practice basic wildlife safety when you're out there. Uh, do everything else to try and just avoid the situation and hopefully scare the bear away. Remember, this is always a very last resort. All right, here's that lichen that we collected earlier uh, today and dried out in the sun. So this here should catch fire. Everything is still really damp. Now I've never started a fire like this before, but this should work really well. We're just gonna use a little bit of black powder. There we go. A little bit goes a long way. Remember, don't play around with this kind of stuff. So what we're just gonna do is take a single percussion cap and light the black powder with that. 
We're gonna put that on an empty cylinder. We're not actually shooting the black powder. Instead, we're just gonna spark it with one of these percussion caps. There's no gunpowder in here. Instead, the gunpowder is chilling right there, and this should, in theory, light the fire. Oh man, it like all burnt up in a big puff of uh, a big puff of nothing. I'm telling you guys, it is really damp out. It's hard to start a fire right now. All right, here we go again. That was a little bigger puff than I thought it was gonna be, but we lit up our fire, no one got hurt. Remember guys, don't do this kind of stuff at home. That's what I'm there for, to do the stupid stuff for you guys. What a beautiful night. Dang. I noticed the crickets were getting really cold in the van, so I, I brought them out here to the fire to kind of enjoy some of the heat with me. I don't know if they're enjoying it or not, but they, they seem to be a little more active. All right. I'm just gonna throw. Whoa, oh, some big bug just flew in my neck. What the heck was that? <laughs> We're gonna throw some butter in here. Ooh. Don't be shy, don't be shy. We've been burning it off today. We're gonna make kind of like a mountain man, a mountain man dinner. Brussels sprouts. tell you guys something if you don't like Brussels sprouts is the only way you've ever had them steamed I don't know why people steam Brussels sprouts it's kind of a waste waste of a Brussels sprout if you ask me those things deserve to be seared in a pan with some delicious seasonings it's the way to cook a Brussels sprout a few slices of potato Potatoes are getting nice and golden brown. We're making room for our trout. There we go. No giants, but uh, <laughs> they'll do. Just a little bit of Danish sea salt. There we go. We've been working hard, so we don't don't gotta be shy. Look at that. Just crystals of goodness right there, straight from Denmark. Ooh, a little bit on the veggies, a little bit on the fish. It's the only spice we're gonna use. Some of you guys have asked me why I don't use pepper. I love pepper. Why cook a fish in the wild in the first place? I come out here to just simplify things and with that I wanna simplify the flavors and just really taste what a fish like this would taste like in the wild. Oh, <laughs> perfection on that one. Ooh, they're both just golden brown. All right, these guys are pretty small, so we're really not gonna let anything go to waste. I'm just gonna eat the, the fins. Ah, screw it. Ooh, ah. These fish are so small. They just eat them bones and everything. No, it's the size of a, of a herring. So tomorrow we're gonna go up to a lake that hopefully has bigger fish. I've fished this river before, never had a lot of luck in it. Actually, I've never caught a fish before in this river, so I felt really good about finally catching something, but it um, seems like it's just a lot of small trout. So we're gonna hike up to a lake tomorrow. Uh, hopefully we'll have more luck there. Mm. Can't complain though. Just found a little tiny frog here by the fire. So we're gonna, we're gonna get this guy way out of here. Don't want him anywhere near the flames. Here you go, bud. <laughs> Kitty.
Well, good morning, guys. It was beautifully warm in the van last night. So you guys can see the sun is already up too. Oh, yeah, I slept in a little bit. Don't feel guilty about it at all. Also check that out. I brought the uh, crickets inside with me because it was really cold and they didn't, they didn't like the cold. So I even gave them some little hotties so that they stayed nice and warm. If those things don't catch fish, then, then what the hell? And I drove around with crickets in my van that I like pampered crickets tonight for nothing. That'd be weird. I'm gonna make a little bit of breakfast, a little bit of coffee. As you can see, there's not a lot of room in there with that full-size kayak in the van, but that's okay. We're gonna need that for the next episode. So if you guys aren't already subscribed, feel free to. That way you guys don't miss that one. Of course, you don't have to subscribe. You can just enjoy the videos as is. I've got a camera way up in the hills there. Just the stars were just once again out of their mind. It's just, that's what you get when you come up here in the mountains is just these, there's no light pollution because the cities are so far away. You just don't get that in the cities, man. That's where I want to go is way up in the mountains there, way up high. They're still a little snowed in, but we'll be there soon. We'll be there soon. Probably in July is when I'll be able to make it up there. Here's the camera that I had. That was kind of the scene that I was looking for last night. Or if you guys want to shoot a cool, like a star lapse or just a picture of the stars, don't shoot it of just the stars. Have like a mountain or some trees in the foreground. And that just kind of makes the whole thing a little more interesting. Just kind of, you know, a little bit of food for thought. Ah. Time for breakfast and coffee. So I mixed up a little bit of mountain bread dough for us that we're gonna cook over the fire now, make a little bit of bread uh, for the hike that we're going on now to catch some trout as well as just a little breakfast. All I did was I used some flour, some salt, some sugar, a little bit of oil, some yeast and warm water, and then just mix it together, let the dough rise. And now we're just gonna smear it on the stick here. It's a little on the runny side. Really on the runny side, dang. There we go, we're just gonna get it on the stick and before it drops off, we're just gonna kinda keep spinning it here over the fire. Oh no. go mm. so simple but so good so I'm just gonna cook a few more of those so that we got a snack uh, for the lake that we're heading to now to go fishing as well as for tonight I'm gonna kick back relax for a bit soak in the view trailhead now it's just a little hike into this lake i've never been here before so this is the first we're just exploring this forest together now this lake here it's not that far it's probably only a couple miles so i didn't bother bringing the tent or anything i've got an emergency bivy and my other 
you know, emergency gear with me, rain jacket in case something happens, but we shouldn't be out here for very long. I mean, come on, when can you say no to this kind of stuff? Just disappearing into the wild and uh, just living out here for a while. Look at that. Man, it's just so beautiful. Oh! Whoa. Whoa. Almost went in. Almost went into like the deepest part of that too. Whew. We're getting up just a little bit higher in elevation and I'm noticing more and more of the trail is covered with these giant patches of snow. Oh man, look at all these trees that came down. Couple little frogs right here. Look at that. Hey, buddies. <laughs> the trail is just a little creek, so we gotta watch out that we don't step on any of those frogs. And here's a really good example of what post holing means. See how uh, on the top you might think, oh, look at that, a nice snow field. But underneath, ooh. So if we were to step on this, not knowing that there's like, that it's just a snow bridge, just put our weight on and break through. And that's when you hurt yourself. So whenever you see a creek or even like rocks or something like that under the snow, kind of try and stay away from that. So we're gonna go on the side of it and that's where the snow is, is solid. Wow, we've arrived at a beautiful alpine meadow. Look at this. Wow, look at the peaks. Last year we did a video up at this rock there, way up there. And I wanna try and get over there this year as well as there again and over those hills. But right now it's just completely snowed in up there still. We're gonna go crazy this summer. I'm just ah, pumped, man, absolutely pumped. Man, this right here, this is why it took me so long to get back up in the mountains for you guys my favorite place in the world but uh, unfortunately we can only access this area for a few months out of the year just imagine what this looked like in May or April yeah, the trail is completely flooded up here but it sure is pretty Just, it's filled with snow patches here everywhere. Very hard to see the trail. Look at that nasty hole right there. There's a giant cavern underneath the snow here. So we're not gonna walk right in the center. We're gonna poke with our sticks and check for holes. Ooh, right there, poles are going in. We're gonna avoid, oh man, avoid stepping there. All right now, I don't, see the trail at all no trail no footsteps just got to be so careful that you don't get lost look at those giant rings around all the trees <laughs> that's where all the snow fell off of the branches when it melted and it just forms these forms these built-up rings around the around the tree oh man I'm pretty sure the trail goes straight through here this is a disaster. Oh, fell through a little hole. I'm gonna leave marks in the snow here so that I can kind of find the way back. There we go, just in case I get lost, I'll know to look out for that guy right around here. A lot of people just rely on their cell phones to keep them alive out here. They're great, they've got GPS's and maps and all sorts of stuff on them, but always do carry a manual compass and a paper map with you. If this gets any worse, we might have to bust out our navigation stuff, but so far we're doing okay. Listen to that beautiful bird. I've got my rod sticking out the back. We're gonna do the limbo here. Whew. 
There we go. There she is. Oh. What a gem. Oh man, there's not really a shoreline. The lake is really high right now. Usually there would probably be a beach here. Almost out of water. I brought a water filter though, so we'll be able to filter some from the lake. That scared the crap out of me. Man, I was ready to punch a bear in the face. I just, I thought something was charging through the bushes. Wow. Well, check this out. Every time I step here, water comes out there. <laughs> That's so weird. Well, let's give it a try. That's all we're waiting for on this one is for that line to just start moving out. Then we'd know we'd have a bite. I'm just gonna throw the bullet lure a little bit. Man, the sun is just in our face though too. Ooh, man, it is so shallow. I kinda wanna get to that rock here. Oh, I'm balancing on a tiny little rock. Oh, is that a bite or just a, I think that was just a log. Oh yeah, we got stuck on some grass or something. Man, guys, it's only like a couple feet deep, which is, I mean, sometimes trout do hang out in shallow water like that, but sometimes they don't. Well, we didn't get any at that lake. It was just, the, the shoreline was way too shallow. It's all good, it's all good. We'll be out tomorrow at another lake that should be really promising. We're gonna be chasing for brown trout there. That would just be amazing to catch a brown. I think we've arrived in paradise. So feel free to subscribe if you guys are still brand new and uh, that way you guys don't miss the next episode. Drop a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys for that next one. And until then, you guys all know it. Fish on, baby. A little windy out here, but man, is that a view!